When you take a photo with a wide angle lens, you often end up with lens distortion. And when you're taking photos of things that should have straight angles, such as a building or an interior, this can cause your photos to look a little bit weird. Luckily with Perspective Warp in Photoshop, you can easily define the planes of the different edges or walls in your photo and manipulate them to become straight once again. So in this tutorial, you learn exactly how Perspective Warp works in Photoshop, and that way you'll be able to correct any wide angle distortion. So let's get started. Hello friend, my name is Brennan from BeWillCreative.com and let's start things off with a simple example here. Now although this photo is not really that distorted, it is a little bit slanted to the left side. So with perspective warp we can define this entryway and then warp it to become straight once again. Now before you go and do any perspective warp adjustments, it's always best to duplicate your image layer so that way you're working non-destructively. To duplicate your image layer just press command or Control J with your image layer selected to create a copy. Now with that copy selected, let's access Perspective Warp by going to Edit and down here to Perspective Warp. Once that tool is selected, by default you'll be in the layout mode, which means you can click and drag out on your image to define an area. Now what you see here is essentially a warping plane. Now the goal here is to add a plane to any of the areas you'd like to correct. So in this case, I want to add one plane to this entryway. I want to add a plane above the entryway, and then I want to add some on either side of the entryway as well. That way we have control of all the different walls and perspectives in our photo. Now to make sure that you get the best results with this tool, it's worthwhile to align everything with any edges in your photo. So as you can see in this example, I'm aligned at the top trim here and near the sidewalk. But as for these pillars, I'm going to click and drag this over just a little bit so that I align the edge of this plane right with the corner of this pillar. Now obviously there is also this corner down here, but we're going to go with the most dominant corner, which is this section of the pillar here. Now that our first plane is added, let's go and add a second one to the outside edge. So I'm going to click and drag out once again, and notice how the blue line between the two planes has become a little bit thicker. So that means they're going to connect when I let go of my mouse. Now that they're automatically connected, I can just go and reposition these anchor points as I need to position this according to the plane of this wall. So for this, I need to align to these straight edges essentially. So that's aligned there. And down here, I can maybe move this over just a touch. So now that sort of represents the angle of that wall. Now I'll do the same on this side, click and drag out like so. That'll automatically snap to it. And I'm going to align to the edges on this side of the wall. Now, finally, just so that we have the option and it might get distorted when we do our adjustment, I'm gonna add one more plane up on the top to define the trim. Now, once you have everything set up, you can move any of your anchor points as needed to do any fine tuning of your layout. But once your layout is complete, we can go into the warping adjustment by going to the warp option up in the options bar. Now clicking warp, notice how all of our planes change and they become white. So that means that we can warp these now. Now there are a few preset options here that you can automatically align to the vertical, horizontal, or there's an auto warp setting here, but I honestly find that these don't often do the best job for my images. So I like to do it manually like I'm about to show you here, but feel free to experiment with those as you wish. So since I want this entryway to be straight, I'm gonna use my guides to make sure that everything actually does that. So first I'll access my ruler by pressing Command or Control R, and then I'll just click and drag down from my ruler, and I'm going to place a guide right along the top edge of this entryway. I'll then click and drag down one more time to align down at the bottom of the sidewalk here. Now I can just zoom in and click on any of these anchor points, and I can warp this to align a little better according to the guides that I just placed. You can even go and add vertical guides as well to ensure that everything looks good vertically as well as horizontally. Now by default, all of the warping anchor points will snap to the guides, which can kind of be annoying when you're trying to do really small adjustments. So to disable snapping, just go up to view and down here to snap, and then click on that, and it should be unchecked now, so you can go and move your anchor points freely without having them attached straight onto the guide. So after a bit of adjustments there, that looks pretty good for what I'm looking for, and I'll press the check mark to commit to that. And then to clear your guides, just go to View, Guides, and Clear Guides. Now turning that on and off, you can see how we've just adjusted the perspective a bit to feel like it's not 
slanted towards the left as much and it makes everything feel a little bit more straight up and down. Now, of course, you could have also warped this inside wall of this photo, but it's really up to you and the perspectives that you're trying to work with. So now that you understand how to use this tool in a basic sense, let's go through a more complex example with more angled warping planes and an image that will leave you with transparent areas that you need to fill in afterwards. Now here in this photo, you can see that it's super distorted because of the wide angle lens and the panorama that was used to stitch this image together. Obviously, this room wasn't a fun house and it's not meant to look like it's slanting over to the right. So we're going to use perspective warp to fix this problem as best as we can. So once again, we're going to duplicate that image layer by pressing command or control J to duplicate that image so we can work non-destructively. Then we'll go up to edit and down here to perspective warp. Now this time we need to adjust the back wall and the floor primarily, but because we're gonna be doing such heavy adjustments, we should add a plane to pretty much all of the walls in this photo. So I'm gonna start with this back wall here by clicking and dragging it like so, and then adjusting the anchor points to match the perspective of this wall. With that complete, I'm gonna click and drag out to define the floor. Then I'll define this left-hand wall, clicking and dragging out. I'm gonna move this anchor point over to my first plane so that it links. So now this warping plane is connected to these two. And I'll just move this up like so. Now I'll click and drag out to add another on this wall. And then finally, I'll go to the roof and I'll just click and drag out across the roof, move that anchor point down like so, move this anchor point over, connect to that one. And now we have a roof defined as well. So essentially we've created this complicated looking grid that will help us to warp every single wall of our photo to hopefully correct this floor so it doesn't look like a fun house anymore. So with all this defined, I'm gonna to go to warp and now I can go and adjust my anchor points to change the look of this room. I'll start by moving down this corner of the floor and notice how all the other angles in the room become corrected as well. I'll then move up this side of the floor a bit and maybe stretch out the wall. I'll also go and play around with the lower part of the ground here because looking up at the windowsill, you can see how it has a bit of a warping effect to it right now because of what we've done to the floor. So I'm gonna to try to correct that by playing around with this anchor point here. This ultimately will take quite a bit of fine tuning just to get everything looking right, but it is just a matter of moving these anchor points around until you find a perspective that you're happy with. So as for the floor, I'm gonna say that is as good as I can get it for this particular photo. So I'm gonna press the check mark to save those changes. Now, in this case, we have a couple issues at play. The first is that you can see we have some transparent pixels left over. The second is that we have this very distorted windowsill that we should probably correct. Luckily, both of those things are relatively easy to do. To fill in those transparent areas, I'm gonna grab my lasso tool by pressing L, and I'm gonna just create a selection with a little bit of the image selected as well as a transparent area, like so. Then I'll hold the shift key, and I'm going to go and select any other transparent areas just around the very edge here and connect that too. Now I'm gonna right click within that selection and go to content or fill. Now I've talked about content or fill in another video that I'll leave up in the corner right now as it's really great for replacing missing pieces in a photo as well as removing things from your images relatively easily. So in this case, you can see in my preview, it automatically has added in that transparent area. There's a little bit of a mess up here, but we can touch that up, no problem. So I'm gonna press OK to save those changes. Now I'll press Command or Control D to deselect, and now we have filled in those transparent edges. And I'll just crop this in a bit by using my crop tool to get rid of that excess transparency on the very edge. Now that the transparency is dealt with, let's go and fix a couple of these warped edges in the photo. So I'm gonna create a new layer and then I'm gonna grab my clone stamp tool by pressing S on my keyboard. Now the first order of business is to correct this wonky part of the floorboards here. So I'll start by scaling up my brush and then holding Alt or Option and sample right along the straight edge of the floor. Then I'll align this so that you can see how it lines up there. And I'm gonna click and drag out to paint that in. I'll reset my sample right on the straight edge and then go and paint that in once again. Then for the floorboards, I'm gonna do a little bit of the same thing, sampling on the edge of that floorboard, clicking and dragging out and doing that one more time to fill in this wonky part of the floorboard on both edges. Now, as for the windowsill, we're gonna do a very similar thing, once again, using the clone stamp tool. And I talk about the clone stamp tool way more in depth in another video I'll leave in the corner right now that I definitely recommend checking out if you're not familiar with this tool, as it will add a lot more context to what we're talking about right now. But anyways, with that clone stamp tool still selected, you're gonna hold Alt or Option, sample this bit of the windowsill, 
use a bit of a larger brush this time, and then go and begin where the warping starts. And I'm just gonna paint over that like so. And I'll just continue to paint until that is completely filled in. And then I'll go and clone out this remaining bit that doesn't match up with what we were looking for anymore. So now zooming out, we have that nice straight edge by our windowsill and we have all of our clone adjustments on their own layer here. So I'll just quickly merge these layers and let's look at the before and after. So this is our current version and this was our before. So you can see how much of a difference that perspective warp has done for us. We've completely changed the angle of the room. Although it is still a little bit distorted, it's significantly better than what it was. And you can only really push these warping adjustments so far before things start to go really wonky and get bendy around certain edges. So this is kind of the best type of result that you can expect for this sort of photo. And then with the help of the clone stamp tool, we're able to clean up any of those bendy edges to make things look nice and clean once again. Again. So whenever you're shooting photos with a wide angle lens, remember perspective warp is always there to help correct things that just look a little bit off around the edges of your photos or in any interior images where obviously the walls should look nice and straight. If you enjoyed today's tutorial and you learned something today, make sure to hit that like button down below and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Anyways, my name is Brennan from bewillcreative.com. I appreciate you for stopping by and I'll catch you back here next time. See you then.